everybody, Susie Q here, and welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. Today, I want to take a look at two different kinds of enclosures. I'll be talking about my bearded dragons, and one is a bioactive enclosure, and one is not. So I'm going to compare the two and see which one I like better. Um, I have a good idea which one I like better, but I'm going to compare. Today I want to introduce you to my brand new three-year-old bearded dragon bagel. He is an absolute love bug. Loves to cuddle. He loves to sit with me on the couch and watch TV. Um, and if he gets a little rambunctious, he'll jump off my lap and run back and forth on the couch and come right back to my lap. He is absolutely adorable. Let me tell you how I got him. He's three years old. And this amazing family was moving and their landlord wouldn't let them keep pets. Not even a bearded dragon. Who does that? <laughs> but this family took such good care of them and needed to rehome them. And I saw it on one of my local Facebook groups and I couldn't resist. If you could tell, he's a leatherback. He's a male. He is absolutely stunning. I asked his uh, owners, you know, bagel, that's different. <laughs> and the guy said, well, I was eating a bagel when I got him. <laughs> So I thought that was adorable. But he came with an enclosure that I'm not used to. All my enclosures are bioactive. And he came with a tiled floor enclosure. So I wanted him to be as comfortable as possible. And if I move him over to a bio enclosure, it's going to be gradual and over time. But right now I want him to keep, because he's got different people in his life, I want his home to be the same. So let's go check out the difference between cleaning his enclosure a tiled floor enclosure, and a bioactive enclosure. They are very similar, but very different. Let's go check it out. I just love my new addition. He's adorable. Now cleaning out this kind of cage makes it super simple to know you've cleaned it out. You remove the three or four items. Oh, try not to spill the water, even though I'm going to dump this clean that out this is what I put his salad in now for someone who's three years old he's starting to eat a lot more salad than when he was a baby when they were babies it was a lot more insects and critters and I try to put like a treat of like maybe a wax worm mix it in the salad so that the babies eat a little more greens but as they get older they eat more greenery and less bugs although I haven't seen the less bug part I've just seen the increase in salad So having this kind of setup makes it super easy to clean up. So I've added in his water and his food dish. Now I'm going to put back in his hide. And like I said, these are all the things that he's used to. And then I'm going to put in this log. And let me tell you why this log is so important. Not necessarily how I put it in, but that it's in there. And it's like this. So being a cold-blooded animal they got to regulate their own temperature through their enclosure so on this side is about 100 degrees this side is between 80 and 90 and they can determine whether he's at 100 degrees up I mean um it's about 90 to 5 degrees up here and it gradually if he wants to bask at a lower temperature he'll lie down here there's sometimes he lies on the ground he decides where he wants to go and where he wants to um be at to regulate his own temperature which is good now when they're babies i keep the hot side and i'll show you that in my other enclosure at around 105 110 and then they can go down they so they can climb up and get hotter 
or they can climb down. Now nighttime where the lights go off, their heat goes off as well. And it can go down from between anywhere between like 70 and 75 degrees. I'd say start at 72 to 75, 77 degrees at night. But if your ambient temperature is lower than that, you might want to get a, like a little heat. It's not a lamp. It's just a heat emitter so that it, it gives off just enough heat to keep it at that 72 mark and keep it above the 72 mark. They need to know that it's nighttime so I don't keep any lights on at night and I do let the temperature drop but my household temperature is at um, 68 or so. So I do in this room, if he, I'm getting ready to get him in the fish room. So this room I have that heat emitter but if it was in the fish room I would not need the heat emitter at night. It was just their um, UVB lamp and this light over here, can you see? They came with him. Oh, it's a little warm. It's both. It's a, it's a UVB light and a heat emitter both. So that's the gradient temperature I keep in this enclosure. And I do the same gradient temperature even if it was um, a bioactive enclosure. But this was cleaning out the regular enclosure which I thought was very simple very clean and easy you could per you could see exactly where any dirt was I could see if there was a dead cricket it was real easy to see it's a little different with the bioactive enclosure so let me show you that okay so here's my bioactive enclosure this houses two of my baby bearded dragons which they're probably not going to stay together but right now they're babies they're fine they love it and I'm gonna, some of the things that I'm gonna do the exact same is I'm gonna take the water dish out, wash it off. I'm gonna take their food dish off and wash it off. And because these guys always poop on that rock, I'm gonna take that off and wash it off. I shouldn't say always. I, should, I guarantee at least one of them always poops up here on this rock. That makes it super easy. But I'm not gonna clean out if there's other poop in here. And if I run across a urate, which is that hard white substance, I will pick that out. But for the most part, I'm just going to remove the visible poop on the rock. And let me tell you why I leave their tank as is. Now, this substrate is designed to not retain a lot of humidity because they're for my bearded dragons. I have several plants in here that I know they chomp on. Perfect. I want them to eat more greens. So if they eat a little bit of the aloe, if they eat, uh, I think that was aloe. This one they've chewed on. This is a fake plant. There's a cactus back there they haven't eaten. But I, 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 I did grow some plants in here as well. But the substrate's aerated. It does have some sphagnum moss built in. Because not only do I have to take care of the bearded dragons in here, I also have to take care of some other little bugs. I have both isopods and springtails in here. So the isopods will eat any of the detritus. The They'll eat the poop. And they will cultivate. And if I water these plants, if I water these leaves a little bit, top stays dry you see that but if you go underneath it's moister so the bugs stay alive that way they get if you see it's a sometimes you can pick up a piece of wood and see them they're everywhere in here I see them more towards dawn and dusk but there are isopods all over here eating up the bugs there's also springtails which are tiny white bugs that I also cultivate that will eat like any kind of like mold or mildew and that kind of uh, it's a pretty amazing dynamic cleanup crew in this tank so all I'm doing is the food dish the water dish any visible large poop I don't you know doesn't bother me or sometimes I brush it off to the side but if it's a urate these hard white ones I, I remove them and it's great now these got this tank I missed down like I said for a couple different reasons one, I'll mist it down to make sure the leaves get a little wet. Even though I know the top part's going to dry, it's a nice desert. I've never worried about impaction. There's no sand in here. I don't worry about impaction. I've seen them chomp up roaches right out of the substrate and spit out the substrate. So um, I, I've never seen that, that that's an issue so far. But in this tank also has that 
that gradient, that gradient heat. Uh, because they're so little, it's a hotter in here than it was in the grown-up bearded dragon tank. Up here it gets to about 110. Then they have all different hiding spots. Look at them eating that aloe. I love it. I love it. You can eat it all you want, buddy. So this is Milo and Otis. And I'm about to get them some food and fresh water. But that's it. That's the extent of cleaning up the tank. I spray them down and I include them in the spray down. They love to get sprayed down. It keeps them moist, helps them shed. Um, they do drink out of a water dish at occasions, but a lot of times they just soak in what I'm spraying or they'll lick it off the rock and the leaves. So I'll just, I'll spray down the rock because I just, yeah, babies. And I make sure I water the plants. I don't have to water it. Sometimes they follow the water and they like it. Other times they run from it, they don't. So this guy, Milo, he stands up and he'll start swatting at the water. It's really adorable. But anyway, this also gets the, the isopods and the springtails what they need. Plus there's small pieces of wood chips in here that they'll eat off of. And they're getting hungry. These guys love their crickets. I don't like crickets at all. I don't like the way they smell. I don't like the way they look. I don't like their how I'm always killing them by accident. I, I just don't like crickets. I have a dubia roach colony going and I feed them the smallest of the dubia roaches. I dust them a little bit of the calcium powder. And then once a week or so I'll give them the vitamins. But all their food gets dusted with um, calcium. That mixed with the UVB. Oh, they are just too cute. Yeah. So I will have to say that if I had my choice, all my tanks would be bioactive. Any tank that I set up is bioactive. I got some cultures of isopods growing. I've got cultures of springtails growing, getting ready to set up my next bioactive enclosure. But I certainly do not want to alter Bagel's life that drastically all at once. So for right now, his tank is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with the enclosures. I think it's a preference. Hi guys. But yeah, I'd have to say, of all the types of enclosures, the bioactive is my favorite. It's where I get to be a little more creative, incorporate plants. Now I'm going to keep replacing edible plants for them because I love the fact that they keep eating them. I think that is awesome. So let me clean out their water dish and food dish and feed my beardies. Today is romaine because it's basically whatever I had for dinner last night. Um, and this, if you're thinking, this, that's a lot of salad. It is a lot of salad, but it's also for my tortoises. So, well, my one tortoise, the other one's in brumation. Oop, it hasn't come out and eat yet. So I add a little bit of calcium, rub it around. I'll take this head and dab it in the calcium as well, because this extra head, I'm giving this to my dubia roaches. So they'll get some nice good juice. They'll get some good calcium. My tortoise, I'm going to add some flower toppers as a treat. But for right now, let me get the bearded dragons fed. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are my comparison between the bioactive enclosure and a regular enclosure with a tile floor. Personal preference. Which do you like?